No, I don't really do any of the small fire on that. That edge. So here's what we have here. We're looking at front view. They're giving us this angle here. They give us 42 degrees on the first one. And right end view over here. They're giving us 55 degrees. They're asking us to find that angle of rotation. Got the angle of rotation on this side now. And they're finding the angle C. Um, basically, what we were calling angle C estimation. So, what we're doing is we're drawing our box just a bit backwards now. Maybe we're just not drawing it well at all. There we go. So what we're doing now is we're going from this corner. Down to this corner right here. With our angle of rotation right there. So once again, we are not given any dimensions here. But if I chop these off like that, I can pick a dimension here. That's going to be the same dimension, isn't it? Let's call it 10. That makes that 10. I can find this dimension here because tangent of 55 degrees equals 10 over, we'll call that little a. So it's 1 times 10 divided by tangent of 55. Perfect. 7, 0, 0, 2. So that is this right here. This one is going to be tangent of 42 equals 10 over B. 11.106. Now R... Will simply be the inverse tangent of 10 over 11.106. Sounds good. 42 on the head. Now to find C here, we have this is 10. We need to know either the bottom or this. So the most more useful, I think, would be the length. This here, so we'll do that as the square root of 10 squared, 0, 0, 2 squared. Perfect, what's that give us? Forty two, yeah, that looks right. You come up with something different? Oh, you're right. You are correct. Thank you. I, I pulled the wrong. I pulled the wrong number in here. This is not the ten. That's the seven point zero zero two. Thanks, Dave. I was seeing that totally wrong. After I looked at you guys on a screen, triangle. Right? 32.23, there we go. So then we got the 15.177 there. So then C is going to be the inverse sine of 10 over 15.177. Forty-one point two two. Like I said, there is no practical application where you would have to find this. You know, the the qualities of that line, at least not in constructing the part. Now, like I said, there's buffing, 
or you might want to doing a relief on that where you're sending it through a grinder just to grind the burrs off that edge or you would need to line that edge up with the grinder. Um, that would be the angle of tilt here. This angle would really be the one you would need for that. Not, you don't need to rotate it because the grinder can go in any orientation. But. Now, just for fun today, you guys got that all written down or you just, wait a second. There you go. Okay. We are going to look at something that almost never gets talked about in math. I'm going to put some angles in here. We're going to call this 55 degrees. This one we're going to call 80 degrees. What's this one down here have to be? 45 degrees. There you go. Perfect. 180 total. So obviously, it's a little out of proportion, but that's okay. We're going to call this one over here 50 millimeters. So I'm going to find those other sides. I'll label this A and B. So I have, what do I do to find those other sides? Well, no right angles here. I use the law of sines. So I have one side 50, what do I do with that? Sine of the opposite angle. That'd be opposite from the 80, right? Equals, let's say I want to find A first. That's going to be over sine of 45. Now, since I am looking for a side here, there's no inverse or anything I have to do. So 50 times sine of 45, make sure we close the parentheses, divided by sine of 80, 35.90, 35.9. So A is 35.9. B is going to be found using the exact same approach. Only now it's going to be B over sine of 55. Good. Before we do any calculating here, where do we what do we expect that value to, to land? Yes, 55 is the middle angle in size, so it's got to be between 35.9 and 50. Okay. 41.59 we get there. Somebody asked me a few weeks ago, is there a law of tangents? And the answer is, why, yes, there is. The law of tangents. Is the difference between two sides, A and B, over the sum of two sides. So the difference between those two sides, A and B, over the sum of those two sides, A and B, gives us a ratio that is equivalent to the tangent of one half of angle A minus angle B over the tangent of one half of angle A plus angle B. Let's see how this works out. So A is 35.9 and B is 41.59. Those are the links. A is 45, B is 55. So a little bit of math here. 
this is going to be negative five point what? Five point six nine. This is going to be a positive seventy seven point four nine equals the tangent of 45 minus 55 is a negative 10 times one half makes that a negative 5. 45 plus 55 is 100 times one half is 50. So let's see if this holds true. Negative 5.69 divided by 77.49 negative 0 0.0734 On the other side, let's take the tangent of negative 5 divided by the tangent of 50. Negative 0 0.0734. Well, where would this possibly be used? Well, let's think. That voice came out a little creepier than I was really anticipating. <laughs> when we had a setup like this before where we had two sides and the angle in between them, we could find that angle there, right? How did we find that angle? The law of, or not the, the side, how do we find the side? Law of cosines. So C squared, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write it like this. C, instead of C squared, I'm gonna write it as C equals the square root of. A squared, which is 40, squared plus b squared which is 50 squared minus 2 times a so 2 times 40 times b which is 50 times the cosine of angle c which is 60 degrees Does that look familiar so square root of 40 squared plus 50 squared plus 2 times 40 times 50 times the cosine of 60 78.1. This is 78.10 millimeters. And then we found A and B. We had 78.10 over the sine of 60. I can try her again. Oh, I made it plus the seven. Yep. So my angle is going to be uh, forty-five point eight three. Yes. I was expecting it to come out in the middle there. So yes, this is forty-five point eight three. So I'm put forty-five point eight three here above the sine of sixty equals 40 over the sine of a. We know that a is going to be smaller, right? So sine of 60 times 40 divided by 45.8 is our number of degrees. Equals 40 49.1 degrees. And then, of course, for C, 45.83 over the sine of 60 equals 50, or sorry, for B, I should say, 50 over the sine of B. So sine of 60 times 50 divided by 45.83 inverse sine. 70.88. So there's a triangle. 
Well, we could have applied the law of tangents here. We would use the law of tangents in this form. I'm going to adjust it a little bit. What's that? They are a little bit off. Am I off? Close enough for what it's for. Those 200 for the degree of tangent. No, no extra charge. So we're going to do this. We're going to do the tangent of A minus B equals A minus B would be 40 minus 50 over A plus B, which would be 40 plus 50, times the cotangent of angle C, which is 60 over 2. So what we have here, where do you get the cotangent? Um, that's an equivalency. We go up to this formula here. What we have done is we have moved this over to the other side. So we made it a cotangent. It's the tangent of one half. A plus B is equal to the cotangent of one half of C. So I just made it C over 2. So 40 minus 50 is a negative 10. 40 plus 50 is 90. Cotangent of, of 30, basically, is going to be the tangent of 30. Reciprocal, right? So 1.732. So 1.732 times negative 10 and divided by 90 gives us negative 0 0.1924, 1925. Now let's go 19245. So a tangent of one half of A minus B equals that. So now I'm going to do an inverse tangent to get rid of the tangent. Tangent negative 1 cancels that out. So I'm going to do an inverse tangent over here. So second tangent, second answer. So I get 10 point, negative 10.893. So that is 1 half of A minus B equals that, right? So I'm just multiply by 2 to get rid of the 1 half. Time for a new battery in my pen. So A minus B equals negative 21.787. That just tells us A minus B. We know that A plus B equals 180 minus C, which was 60, right? Or 120. So we know A minus B equals that. A plus B equals 120. We can now do our elimination method. A plus B is the same. Negative B plus positive B cancels out. Negative 21.787 plus 120 is 98.213. Divide by 2. A is equal to 49.1065 degrees. B then could be found by subtracting that from 120. You get that B is 70.8935 degrees. What do we have up here? Yeah, so it should have been 70.90. But you get it. We, we had it. I mean, it's right there. Well, that seemed a whole lot more work than just doing this, didn't it? So I'm going to explain to you why we have the law of tangents and also why we don't ever see it anymore. Well, yeah, because it is a pain that we don't use it anymore because we've got calculators. This is way easier. Why did we have it in the first place? This thing right here. Square root. Before we had calculators, square root was tough to calculate. 
Let's take a look at what that was. That was 40 squared plus 50 squared minus 2 times 40 times 50 times the cosine. That was 2100, which actually isn't terrible. Before calculators, if I wanted to do the square root of 2100. Yes. I started at the end of the number and I paired the digits up. And I had to go through that whole algorithm. The biggest number squared that's less than 21 is 4. That'd be 16 means on a 5. Bring down the next zeros. 4 times 20 is 80. 80 goes into that. About 6 times. That look right? I look at what my answer is supposed to be so I know. Yeah, something's screwing up. Oh, I know what it is. It's 4 times 20 plus 4. 4 times 20 plus 4 is 96, which goes in there 5 times. 5 times 96 is 480. We subtract to get 20. It's a 0. We add two zeros. We bring them down. That's our decimal point. So that's 45 times 245. Which, that in itself is hard to do without the calculator, right? Well, that's a zero. Doesn't go in there. I can find that square root. Yeah, we don't have this little convenience of just doing that, right? So, rather than, rather than doing that square root, you saw... I did this all here. Yeah, I did have to do the tangent, but tangents were just looking up in the table. You can look up square roots in the table too, but in order to look up square roots in the table, you had to turn it into the logarithm. So you had to make it into the power of one half. It was a lot of work to calculate the square root. That's all I'm going to say. But the law of tangents was a real thing, and it did have a use. It's just that the invention of calculators is not useful anymore. I don't know if there is a lot of secrets. There isn't a lot of secrets. No, oh, here, wait, 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 wait a second. Law of secrets. Would that be like him to ask one of those questions and not be here when we go ahead? Ooh, I should print that off. That would be kind of fun for you guys. The law of sines and law of cosines maze. <laughs> I think I have to. You gotta follow the current direction before you move on to the next. Yep. Okay. That's the next semester. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we should maybe <laughs> pause. But the law of secants has nothing to do with trig. Remember our chord rule where we had oops, I'm spent a lot of time on this. Where we had intersection cards like this. If this was 4, this was 3, this was 12, we could find x because the product of the chords, 3 times 12, has to, or the product of the sections of the chord had to equal the product of the sections of the other chord. That looks familiar. Remember we did arcs and arches and stuff? So we could find that x there has to be 9. This is 36 divided by 4 equals x. So 9 equals x. But the law of secants is saying is let's say we have, let's make sure I got it right. Yes, it's interior plus exterior times exterior. So let's say this is 8 and this is 4. That's 8 plus 4 times 4. 
and let's say this is 3 and 13. That would be 13 plus 3 times 3. Those both have to equal the same number. So if I give you this, let's call this x, we'll call this 26, this 6, and this 16, how do I find x? Well, 16 plus x times x has to equal 26 plus 6 times 6. Distribute the x. 16 times x is 16x. x times x is x squared. 26 plus 6 is 32 times 6 is 192. And we solve. That's just a simple quadratic equation. So that is x squared plus 16x minus 192 equals 0. We briefly mentioned this. We didn't really do a whole lot with it. You could factor this into x and x. We had negative negative 8 and positive 12, I believe. Nope, that ain't going to do it. What I want that to be anyway, it's going to be negative 8 and positive 24. Because 8 times 24 is 192. So this is saying either x equals 8 or x equals negative 24. We haven't seen that for about four months. So. Obviously, x cannot be a negative 24, so it's a positive 8. Otherwise, I don't think the law of secants really says anything else. There is any sort of real official trig law of secants. Nope. Ooh, here's another good one. Let's see what this one looks like. That one I may have to steal, too. Holy crap, there's a whole bunch of them. We could have a lot of fun this next week. <laughs> okay, I'll let you guys off the hook there. Um, I'm going to give.